need something that old Mark can give me. A chance to work. Katie must persuade Mark to operate, and Leslie's shocked at finding Laura with David. Young girls don't go. It's older men. General Hospital, after one life to live. Beginning one hour from now, here on ABC.
I pretend to feel something I'm not? How can I pretend to love Paul as a wife and, and forget about Tony? Wouldn't that be the ultimate hypocrisy? I mean, don't you think that Brian would see through that? Probably. Of course he would.
what you just said. I think it's going to help them get closer to the truth about what did happen. You believe my testimony, then? Yes, why shouldn't I? And why shouldn't everybody else? I just hope and pray he gets what's coming to him. I'm afraid it will happen if he wakes up. Ah! Oh, oh, 
autopsy report, as you know, states Lana McLean died of a combination of alcohol and barbiturates. This could indicate, in the absence of any other evidence, that uh, Miss McLean either accidentally or intentionally ingested those barbiturates all by herself, that is, without any outside assistance. As I say, uh, uh, because of the lack of any evidence, in spite of Mr. Dane's revised testimony, in spite of any evidence to the contrary that there was no one in the apartment that night. In fact, there is no evidence to indicate anyone was ever in that apartment. Uh, everything that we normally dust for fingerprints, uh, doorknobs, uh, the, the telephone, which is off the hook, everything had been wiped clean. There was no evidence of any, no trace of fingerprints in that apartment, not even Miss McLean. What conclusion would you draw from that, Lieutenant? Well, if Miss McLean did die by her own hand, she most certainly would not have gone around wiping everything clean before she died. Therefore, my conclusion is there was someone else in that apartment that night, and that person or persons wanted to cover up any evidence of their presence. Why would someone want to do that? Well, uh, there's only one reason I can think of, and that's because that person caused Lana McLean's death and wanted to escape any detection. Is that the official police position, Lieutenant? Since I'm the investigating officer, I suppose it is. All right, thank you. No further questions. This hearing will stand in recess or adjournment until tomorrow at 10 o'clock, at which time I hope we will wind up this inquiry. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be back here promptly at 10 o'clock tomorrow. Marco, I'd like to have a couple of words with you. Sure, why not? Is your attorney? Uh, yes, Mr. Zanelli, Lieutenant Hall. How do you do, Lieutenant? How do you do, Counselor? I assume you would advise Mr. Dane that he was not going to be hit with a perjury rap because he changed his story today? That's right. And after all, that was only an informal statement he gave you. And after you'd had a chance to refresh his memory, yes, well... Yes, yes, yes. We know why he changed his testimony. Anyway, I kind of knew you were lying. Matter of fact, I'm not so sure you told the truth this afternoon. Why? Well, it's a little too convenient, Marco, you know what I mean? I mean, you just happened to be there to see Brad's car parked outside of Lana's apartment that night. Well, uh, you know, if I wanted to, I could make things pretty rough for you. I mean, after all, you did mislead us the uh, first time around. Are you saying you're going to charge my client with obstruction of justice? No, counsel, I'm saying your client better keep his nose clean and stay in town. As... As attorney, I'm sure you've already advised him. You have the responsibility of keeping him around as long as he's under subpoena. I've got no reason to run. I've got nothing to hide. Let's go, Mr. Stanley. Well, Doctor, what do you think? <laughs> I was about to ask you the same question. Oh, uh, well, I told my wife I've long since given up trying to second-guess juries. But I'd say, as I saw these people leaving the box tonight, that uh, they had blood in their eyes. I got the feeling an indictment is going to come out of this. What are you doing here? I'd ask you the same question. I don't have to justify my being here to you, but I do have an obligation to protect my family, and I'm warning you. If your being here has caused them any pain, you're going to do what? With the two of you, please stop making things worse than they already are. Tony, you are responsible for what just happened. When I think of the damage that could have been done, if you continue to go on with what you were saying. I'm responsible. Yes, you are. I don't want to see you again until all of this is resolved. All right. That's what you want. You'll call me then. You have my number. I just hope you two know what you're doing. Because you're ruining that boy's life. Letting him think that he can control yours. You're creating a monster. And as I say, if I'd had the privilege of cross-examination, I could have discredited Marco Dane immediately. But you couldn't. And the jury was left to judge for itself. So I think that's seem fair, Mr. Barney. Yes, sir. Coroner's jury, sir. They do not have the power to convict. They can only make...
make recommendations to the district attorney. Well, I'm sure it won't even get that far. I'm sure you're right. All right, thanks for coming back with us, and uh, I'll, I'll see you in the morning. All right, I'd like to get together with you tomorrow morning, uh, say 9.30, and go over your testimony. Okay. All righty. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Mr. Brennan. Okay.
Good night. 